So we've got our split bramble cane here. We've split this cane into quarters and now what we've got to do is we've got to get this pith out because this is going to create problems if we leave this on the cane. If you try and bind the basket with the pith still in it, what happens is the pith, it rots over time and the whole bind then starts to come loose. So it's imperative that we get this stuff out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a nice sharp knife here. And just to protect the bench, we've got a little chopping board. We'll just stick that on there. And it's a simple case of just slicing the pith out. Okay, one, two, three, just like that. Okay, and there we go. This is relatively green. It's been cut relatively recently and split recently. So it's nice and green and the pith is relatively soft and you can see that that's coming out really quite nicely. There we are, just working our way along. There we are, pretty good stuff. There we are. A nice sharp knife is required for this because you want to be able to get in underneath the pith and you're taking a little bit of the wood with it but it's a good opportunity to trim down the cane as well. Just check it's all in good shape and ready to be used. There we go. You know, it requires a little bit of effort this and it's one of the more mundane parts of the whole process but it's always good if you can get to this pith early and get it while it's still quite green. This bit of cane here is going quite quite thin, um, so the jury's out as to whether we will use the, the uh, final foot of this bit of cane. But there we go. There is our piece of cane with the pith scraped out. And now we've got a really important part of the process because now what we want to do is we want to limber this cane up. And we do that just by bending it round like so and just pulling it through our fingers like that. And you can just hear, you can hear the fibers breaking in it. There we are, just pulling it through. This is, essentially this is stropping the cane. It's turning it from quite a hard piece of stiff wood into something that's limbered up and ready for work. And you can see just as it's moving in my hand, you can just see how it's, it's just moving in a different way there. Okay, it's getting more stroppy, as we would call it. You know, it's, it's sort of moving around in a way that just suggests it's a little bit more elastic and we're gonna be able to bind that. Okay, and the final process now is just to take that piece of cane and just to bind it up. Okay, we'll get it like so. Just put one stitch in like that and just work our way round the bit of cane and there we go. We can stick that ready and waiting to be bound. We can now just stick that on the hook. But there's another technique that we can use. And if you're not in your shed and you're out in the woods and you want to get your pith out there, then what you want to do is find yourself a nice tree stump. You'll grab yourself a different type of knife. And also you'll need a key piece of equipment. It's a nice piece of leather, a bit of old leather jerkin an old leather jacket, as long as you've got a nice stiff piece of leather. And what you do is you take your cane, and it's a different technique. You lay your knife facing away from you, and then what you want to do is just draw the cane through you. Just like so. We are just draw the cane through. And again, you're trying to be careful here, just not to take too much of the cane with you. We are, and it all comes down to technique. And you know, again, there we are, that's going quite nicely now. There we are. So you're using it a bit like, a, as you would a plane, and just planing off this. There we are, that's going quite nicely now. There we are, yes. That's a nice, easy technique. Oh, there we are, just ran away a little bit. I was lucky though, I didn't go through the cane. Okay. There we are, there we are, just pull that through. And that's, in some ways, that's a bit less stress on the hands. It makes things easier. That does ever so slightly. And there we go, there's our finished bit of cane. And again, we just need to strop that, to run it through the fingers and to limber it up. There we are, that's quite a nice bit of cane, lovely and strong. You can, I can feel the strength in this cane. It's fan, 
fantastic really. Uh, and there we go, we're going to bind it up again and it's useful to give it this sort of size when you're binding it because you, A, you can store it and B, you can boil it as well. You can get it in a saucepan and boil it or get it warm nice and quickly. So there we go. So that's the technique you're going to want to use when you're out in the woods. But because we're here in the shed, we don't need our piece of leather and we don't need our stool. We're going to use another technique. And the best technique I think that works with so many materials that you get from the hedgerow is soaking. It does an amazing job and it takes time, but what it does in the case of the pith that we've got on some of this cane is it softens it up. And some of this stuff that I've brought in here, let's get a nice bit. Okay, this has been soaking out in a bathtub just at the back of my, uh, my shed and it takes the rainwater off of the top of the shed and it's a really good way just to soften up cane. So here's some cane I had earlier. And the thing with this is you don't have to use the blade here. You're not slicing, you're not forcing the work. What you can do is you can just use the back of the blade. And because that pith is now nice and soft, look, that's scraping out beautifully. That's coming away lovely. And I'm also managing just to sort of plane down the, the, uh, the, the wood as well of the cane, just to, just to supple that up a little bit and then you can see look and the thing with this as well when you've soaked it it tends to pull out much more pith than if, you, if you're slicing it okay, if you're just slicing across the top of it you tend to just leave a little bit in there but with this technique you can really get into the cane and really sort of force the issue and there we go that's going quite nicely and I've just rigged up a little um, tin can here I've strapped that onto the the uh, vice there just because it just guides the piece of uh, cane as it's coming towards this working surface here that's coming out lovely that's been a bit stiff there see that could probably do with soaking a little bit longer but there we go okay. nearly there still a bit of work needed in this but you're not working with a sharp blade you're not at risk really of slicing through the cane. It's such a frustration when you get halfway through a good bit of cane and you accidentally slip and just find yourself slicing through the wood. But there we go, that's worked really nicely now. Just pull that last little bit off there. That's lovely, look at that. Okay, and there we have a lovely bit of cane there. That is so strong. And we really have taken out all of that pith. It's lovely and smooth on the inside. Yep, I like that bit of cane. And there we go, that's limbering up. And look, there it is. Lovely stroppy bit of material, all ready to be used in a basket. And there we are, we just wanna bind it up again. Okay, there we are. Just stitch that through. It's a nice big, fat, thick bit of cane, this. This will probably be used on the base of the basket, this, but there we go another bit of cane and we've seen three different types of um, pith scraping today we've worked from really quite green material and the pith there is it's still a bit wet but it's it's stubborn and it's hard and spongy doing it on your lap is quite useful because you're using your body just to pull it through it's actually a lot easier in some ways on the body but I think one of the best ways to remove the pith from the bramble is to let the soaking do the work so often soaking is used in the rural crafts just to supple up the material and that's what all of this stuff has had done to it really easy then just to scrape the pith out so let's crack on Make sure your knife is razor sharp and as you work, all the while keep the blade parallel to the bench so that you don't end up slicing down through the cane. It's a tricky balance. When you come to stropping the cane, you may want to consider wearing a pair of leather gloves because after only two or three goes, you can find your hands blistering up. Binding the cane is really important, both because you need to be able to store it and to re-soak it, which is more easily achieved in a pan of warm water if it's coiled relatively tightly.
almost certainly the cane is easiest to pit after a good soaking. But this can be tricky with lengths of up to a metre and a half long. It can be done in cold water left overnight in the bathtub if you've got the rest of the family or your housemates on board. This is also a chance to dress up the outside edge of the cane to shave off some of the lateral shoots. Pithing can be a messy job and getting it right is important because a large part of the success of a basket made from local hedgerow bramble depends on this process. But don't beat yourself up, there are plenty of opportunities further down the line to tidy up your cane.